All right. Ready? Begin. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's been way too long since I made a video. Really excited uh, to jump into this one. The star of the show, the starlet. Uh, working on suspension. Now I've screwed around with uh, just bad ways to mess with the suspension on this thing in the past. But today what we're about to embark upon is proper adjustable coilovers from our friends at Gecko Racing USA. These, this fully adjustable coilover uh, system is made specifically for this KP61 Starlet. Adjustable on the top end. This is the weld on type. So we've got a little bit of work to do. For the rear end, we've got uh, shocks standalone from springs, which is similar to the current setup. Also fully adjustable shocks. Uh, pretty excited about this. This is this does take a little bit of work to put together and to install. Uh, we're gonna shoot this video and send it over to them and see what they see what they think of it. Let's take a closer look at what's on there right now. All right. So currently on the Starlet, we have what were a a eighty six lowering springs that I ended up cutting down uh, in an earlier video. You saw me put those in full size. I have initially cut the springs. These are cheap eBay A86 lowering springs. So we've got to pull this whole uh, strut assembly out on both sides, completely disassemble it, cut it down because we're going to keep the spindle. The back end is going to be much more simple, straightforward. We'll unbolt the shock absorber from the bottom and then from the top and that spring is one of the stock springs that is also cut. The ride quality right now is bouncy bouncy. With these installed, this ought to be a lot better ride. Always need to repaint everything. Jeez, that's ridiculous. It really is only primer. Oh, damn it. Fender, just primer, no dents. So there's the one side out. Uh, let me pull the other side out. One more thing here I wanna do is hang this properly. So now you can kind of see what's left. I, I cleaned it all out and pour 15. That side is out. Yeah, let's get the other side out and get it going. All right, so now with both of these out, ready to rock. The way that this works is this diameter here is the same as this outer diameter. So what you do is we'll cut this down 40 millimeters here uh, so that that can slide inside. It will slip inside there. We'll clean all the paint off here. Um, so we've got bare metal there, so it will get a good clean weld. I'm wondering if I'm gonna regret having not disassembled the hub while it was still in the car, but we'll figure this thing out as we start to take it apart. Oh yeah, that is what you call a blown shock. All right, so now we have got these both cleaned off, ready to go. Next thing is I'm going to have measured 40 millimeters, which is the same as one and five eighths inches. I've already marked this one and I'll mark this second one. super tight fit right now, but this has got a lot of gunk and rust and whatnot on it. So 
fire up the compressor and clean those up. As you can see, the fit here is tight fitting blue jeans. I could continue to sand on those and make them fit eventually, but you don't buy tools to not use them. So I have a hydraulic press. We're gonna go ahead and use the press and just press them down on. There you can see a good tight fit. That will be super easy to weld up. That'll be permanente. Let's get them welded up. <laughs> Don't judge my welding. The last thing I'm gonna do is paint these up with some Pour 15. One eternity later. That sucks. So uh, we've had the 415 on the spindles overnight. These assembled, welded, ground down, ready to go. I have also painted the, the brake dust shields in 415. I'm gonna put those back together and then begin to reassemble the shock as they you know, wear over time, dirt and dust gets in them. It's notorious that they get jammed and messed up. I am going to clean out these threads and then I'm going to use just a little bit of anti-seize butter paste, whatever the heck it's called. I've got a little bit more 415 drying in the wheel well there and up inside of the strut tower. And we're also gonna jump into the uh, back and start to work on the back set of shocks. With any luck, maybe we'll wrap this up tonight. Uh, we've got these all reassembled, put back together. I've done a little bit of fitment testing. If the these wheels and tires end up being just a little bit too big, I've still got my winter set out. My summer set is a little bit smaller, so if we need to set it a little higher, we can do that. I also want to play around with some camber on this, and so while I've got these cambered, they're definitely not going to be uh, daily drivers. In addition to the coilovers, I am gonna be using these uh, Techno Toy Tuning Roll Center Adjusters. And these sit just like this uh, to put the steering linkage and the bottom tie rod down just a little bit lower. I'm gonna adjust this other coilover. Uh, I've got the one set to where I want it. This one is currently bottomed all the way out. I'm gonna shift the camera down just a little bit and talk through this. You can see the two of these, this one's set where I want it. Uh, so let's move this one over, get it out of the way. I'm measuring from here to here. These two rings are locked in, springs preloaded. I mean, really, I just, I need them to match, right? We've got two inches here. So I'm gonna back this one out by spinning the whole assembly. I want to, down at the camera, slid down. You didn't see any of that that I was measuring. I was locked in at two inches. I've got this one set up at two inches. It needs to be pointing away from the spindle so that as it rocks in and out, the one bolt is toward the engine, away from the spindle, because that's how it is in the car. Lining in at two inches. And that's all locked in. There's one other modification I've got to make at the strut tower. So let's go take a look at that. The issue here is that when I come to put these in, fits just a little bit tight on the threads. With the file, I'm gonna just oval these out just a bit. I would call this a very minor modification. 
That fits pretty nice. Let's take a look at what that roll center adjuster is gonna look like going in. I left those a little bit loose just because it gives us just a little bit more movement there and the bolts go closer to you. And then just eyeing the bolt through the top here to make sure it's going in. And I'm gonna tighten the each side a little at a time. So you get the idea of the roll center adjuster. Then with that done, we can reinstall the brake caliper. Anyway, let's go uh, get the other side installed. So it's super light. The rear end is pretty simple compared to the front end. Let's take a look at uh, what that looks like. It just unbolts there and then up inside. So you've got an adjustment on the body of the shock there, as well as on the spring. I've left them both pretty high, pretty conservative at this point. We're going to put this thing down and see where it sits. I'm stoked. Definitely need to give it a drive and see what I think. Drive for a few minutes. If it feels pretty solid. I'll drive it to work. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. More to come. Peace. Just primer, no dents.